Hello, lovely internet strangers. In today's episode of The Eighth Square's Corner, I'm using an article in Harper's Bazaar as a jumping off point for some off the cuff musings about femininity. Now, I've been thinking a lot lately about feminine archetypes because I came across this quiz to discover the percentage of these female archetypes that you embody. It sounds kind of woo, but it was actually really interesting and got me thinking about things I hadn't thought about in a while, like how when I was a teenager, for whatever reason, one of my friends bought the Art of Seduction by Robert Greene, and we both poured through that book from cover to cover. And so I want to make a more put together video, so to speak, about female archetypes. But I had come across this article a while ago, and I thought I would just kind of riff on it a bit. Because one of the things that comes up when you're looking at female archetypes is that there is the female archetype of just who you are as a whole, and then there's the seduction archetype. Things we think of like the siren, the coquette, the ingenue, etc. But that has to do with sexuality. Femininity in and of itself does not necessarily have to do with your sexuality. And femininity is not just something about how you look on the surface level. But this is the conception that I see feminists having a lot. This came up for me personally a few years ago when I was telling one of my close female friends about how I felt more masculine. And she said, oh, I think you're very feminine. You know, you wear dresses all the time. And I was sitting there like, what does wearing dresses have to do with being feminine? You you can wear a dress and act in a very masculine way. You can wear masculine clothes and act in a very feminine way. But so many feminists just equate, you're wearing makeup and like wearing dresses to being feminine. So I don't know how to pronounce this chick's name. The Eastern European in me guesses Emily Ratajkowski. I'm gonna call her Emily. Emily is this model and actress type who you might remember did this Vogue interview, I think, where she talked about how she didn't want to reveal the gender of her baby because she's thinking more about who they're going to be as a person. So the article title says, Emily, insert last name here, explores what it means to be hyper-feminine. So it's an article written by her or maybe by a ghost writer in her voice. So I'm not going to read the article word for word. I will quote from it here and there. Basically, she says that freshman year of college, she took a gender studies class and got exposed to queer theory and the sexuality spectrum and she was a staunch feminist, and she was shocked by how little she understood about gender, and she started examining her own identity as a woman. She acknowledges her cis white privilege, but still wants to speak up about her experience. So a couple of summers ago, she was vacationing with a couple of friends, and one of them made an offhand remark about her being hyper femme. She says, quote, it kind of threw me because in many ways, probably like anyone would, I felt that her comment was an oversimplification of my identity. In my day-to-day -day life, I was not aware of being femme or mask or anything, but just me. Her observation surprised me and made me feel suddenly self-conscious. Sometimes I'm not at all feminine. Come on, I said. She rolled her eyes. Later that night, I thought about what it means to be femme and why I felt sort of offended by my friend's remark. The truth is, I thought, I love being feminine. It started young. I remember being 13, maybe even 12, and having a distinct desire to try on lacy bras and thick gooey lip gloss. It felt fun and exciting. Sure, I'm positive that most of my early adventures investigating what it meant to be a girl were heavily influenced by misogynistic culture. Hell, I'm also positive that many of the ways I continue to be sexy are heavily influenced by misogyny, but it feels good to me and it's my damn choice right? Isn't that what feminism is about? Choice? No, no, no. As we know, feminism is not about choice and it's not about women. It's about power. Feminism isn't about women, it's about power. So you can see in this passage that she hones in on underwear and lip gloss and the ways that she is sexy. That is about sexual expression. That is about your seduction archetype. That is not about acting feminine. She continues to talk about sexiness and how she likes feeling sexy in the way that makes her feel sexy. And essentially she says that what was negative about being called femme was that she remembered all these times when people had told her if she dressed a certain way, then she wouldn't be taken seriously and could even be put in danger and people wouldn't respect her. I mean, it clearly sounds like she was dressing in a provocative manner, shall we say. There are many ways to wear a dress. It's hard to tell because you can only see my top half, but I am actually wearing a dress right now. Later in this article, she also mentions body hair, how body hair is an opportunity for women to exercise their ability to choose, a choice based on how they want to feel and their associations with having or not having body hair. On any given day, I tend to like to shave, but sometimes letting my body hair grow out is what makes me feel sexy. And I'm just like, 
dude. As a bisexual woman, I have an opinion on this, which is you do you, boo. You grow your body hair out and see who wants to date you. Look, any man who is in a long-term relationship with a woman knows that she is not keeping her body silky smooth 100% of the time, but most of the time she is keeping it in check, shall we say, especially under the arms, at least in our modern era in Western society, according to our beauty standards. Yeah, of course it's a choice, but it's also people's choice not to go out with you. Anyway, the point is whether a woman shaves under her arms or not has nothing to do with how feminine she acts, how feminine she is. Or if Marilyn Monroe decided to put on a construction worker's uniform, that would not inherently make her more masculine all of a sudden. Like I said, this has come up in my personal life in conversations with other women. This is something I think about a lot. When I was younger, I did not dress feminine in at all. But then in my 20s, I started to wear dresses and skirts all the time. But wearing dresses did not suddenly change the way I interacted with the world. I find it hard to define what is a feminine way of acting or a masculine way of acting, but I do believe that there is a difference. Everyone has some mix of both, but I think most people present predominantly as one or the other. Most people are generally more in their masculine energy or in their feminine energy. For me, I can be in my feminine energy, but it's not as natural for me. My natural resting place is more in my masculine energy. And people pick up on that in various ways, whether it's because I tend to speak my mind more, whether it's because I tend to be more direct, whether it's because it come off a little bit cold versus the warmth people are used to feminine women exuding. I like to jab at people. I tend not to do it toward women as much, but I like to jab the way men jab at each other. One of the ways that I know that I am more in my masculine energy most of the time than my feminine energy is not only because I have been told this directly by many different people over the years, both men and women, and have even been described direct quote as masculine of center, but also because so many times when men describe their experiences, whether in stand-up, in conversations with me, things that I'm reading in articles or Reddit posts, I relate so hardcore. I'm like, I feel you, bro. This is why I'm married to a man and not a woman, despite how sexy I do find a lot of women. But as far as long-term relationships are concerned, I don't know how men do it anyway. It doesn't mean that I never exude any kind of femininity, but predominantly my energy is masculine, and that has nothing to do with whether I am wearing lipstick or a dress or pants and a t-shirt. And to flip it around, there's someone I know from the dance scene who always dresses very masculine, but she is incredibly feminine, very warm and inviting, kind of a soft speaker, always checking in to see how you're doing during the dance. She dances both roles, so she follows and she leads, but even as a leader, she doesn't lead in a masculine way. It's hard to describe in words, but she definitely leads like a woman, in my opinion. I think I've learned to temper the excesses of my masculine energy energy as I've gotten older, but I was always the kind of person who was very independent, very aggressive. I was not the kind of girl who rolled over and died if a guy said something untoward toward me. There was a guy I was in choir with and he was obnoxious. He brought mistletoe to school during the holiday season and the other girls were too feminine to tell him to fuck off, but he kept harassing them with it, holding it over their heads, trying to get them to kiss him, which now would probably get him kicked out of school, but at the time did not. But when he came up to me with it, I just grabbed it out of his hands, threw it on the ground, and looked him in the eye while I squashed it under my foot. Which of course only led him to say something like, ooh, feisty, because, you know, teenage boy. I had to participate in after school rehearsals with this kid and he knew that I had a boyfriend who was around at these rehearsals and he did not care and would hit on me anyway. And one time he put his arm around me during the middle of rehearsal and said, do you have a garden? Because I'd like a place to put our two lips together. And I grabbed his hand without hesitating, bent his arm behind his back and said, never touch me again. So that was the kind of teenage girl that I was. Now that I'm grown, I'm mostly dealing with, you know, fully grown men, so I'm not trying to twist any of their arms behind their back. But that was just to illustrate that even if you had slapped a dress on me during that moment, it would not have made me more feminine. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to touch on this point because it also comes up when people talk about the trans issue because so much comes down to what people look like and a lot of trans women want to pass as cis women. So they end up looking very girly. For example, the way Blair White looks. And I have no problem with Blair White 
white, but she has this hypersexualized LA look with the perfect blown out hair, big lips, huge boobs, lots of makeup. There was a stand-up comedian I came across recently, don't know the name, but in his act, he was talking about trans women and saying that he's perfectly happy to accept a man who wants to be referred to as a woman now, but feels like there should be some kind of test because women have special abilities that men don't. And for example, one of the things that he brought up was, can you take a compliment and turn it into an argument? And paraphrasing him, he said something like, you compliment your woman saying, you look so beautiful today. And she says, oh, so I didn't look beautiful yesterday? And I laugh so hard because it's so true. That's definitely one of those feminine things that I've done in the past. So those are just my off the cuff ramblings about this topic. Like I said, I also want to do a video about feminine archetypes just as they exist in life, but also when it comes to incorporating sexuality, the seduction archetypes. I don't know when that will be because I have many other videos to make, many of which have been requested by you, my loyal viewers, but expect that sometime in the future. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments, criticisms, suggestions for video topics, please leave them in the comments below or send me an email. Sometimes YouTube likes to delete comments. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.